A. Candice here. Have you ever wondered why, despite doing everything right, taking your supplements, eating cleanly, exercising regularly, you're still not where you want to be when it comes to your health? In the healthcare space, you may hear it talked about as compliance, right? A patient's lack of compliance. I don't personally like the term compliance because uh, it seems disempowering to me, but that's you know generally what we're talking about. Even if you look at it more generally, like in big picture life terms, you know what you should be doing, quote unquote, should be doing or need to be doing, yet you're not doing that. It's like as plain as day, it's in front of your face. You know what? It's not like a matter of not knowing it. You know it. You're just not doing it. Why is that? Or perhaps you could show up where you notice that you kind of get this off feeling or uncomfortable feeling when you're told to set a goal. Or perhaps, you know, from a, a business guru telling you to reverse engineer the outcome that you want. It just doesn't feel right to you. Okay, so some examples, let's say like in terms of your health, you want to lose 20 pounds, you know, you should be strength training or getting in those 10,000 steps yet you're still not. Why is that? Or from a business perspective, let's say you want to make 30K per month. You have the gurus telling you that you need to reverse engineer from that outcome. So it's a numbers game, right? You know that you have to have X number of sales calls given a Y percent close rate, which means that you have to then send out Z number of cold emails or DMs, right? Whatever that is. If that's what it takes, then why aren't you successful yet? You know, what's the block? What's standing in the way of that? So I would suggest that it's not because you need another strategy, another tactic, another protocol supplement, like whatever that tangible thing is that you feel you need that, oh, once I get that, then I'm going to be good, right? It's not that because you've been through the gamut of strategies and protocols and practitioners and gurus, and yet you're still not where you want to be. And I get it. I've been there. I've done that. I'm in the process of going through this and one of the aspects of my life. So just know that when I'm saying all this, it's from a place without judgment. Okay. I'm going through this. I'm exploring this because I'm experiencing this myself. So what if, <clears throat> what if it's simply because you don't love it, whatever that action may be, whatever that step may be, you don't love it. So what if I told you that the key to unlocking true health and really any success in your life lies not in more protocols, not in more strategies, not in seeing yet another practitioner, but rather in aligning with your deepest self, your authentic self, your soul's calling. What if the reason you don't succeed is because that thing that you believe you should be doing or need to be doing is out of coherence with a higher truth, goodness, and beauty, that it's out of coherence with who you are and what is important to you. What if that's the reason? So I want to give you an example from my own life in terms of how I see this play out, and then we'll break down uh, what can we do, like what are some practical steps we can take. So that leads me into what I've called a zero-point root cause. So I've been working with clients in the healthcare space, so as a naturopathic and functional medicine doctor for over 18 years now. And ultimately, what I've noticed is that health issues boil down to two root causes, okay, what I call zero point root causes. One being unresolved trauma that's gotten stuck in your tissues, and or two, not honoring your soul's calling. Now, <clears throat> there absolutely are other root causes, nutrient deficiencies, pathogens, toxins, hormonal imbalances, et cetera, et cetera. But I would argue that those root causes are actually secondary effects, secondary impacts 
due to the primary or zero point root causes, those two that I just mentioned, happening first, having happened upstream, and these other root causes are later happening downstream. Okay, so, you know, if you think of this very logically, imagine two people exposed to the same toxin or the same pathogen. Why is it that one of those people, one of those persons struggle with eliminating that toxin from his or her body while the other person is just fine? Right. Why is that? Or if you think of, you know, someone with a nutrient deficiency that's triggering physical symptoms, let's just say vitamin B12, it's causing brain fog, maybe some cognitive decline. Why did the deficiency happen in the first place, right? So if you dig a little deeper, let's say perhaps it's due to malabsorption. Well, you want to dig a little deeper. What triggered the malabsorption? What caused the malabsorption to happen? So perhaps maybe it's due to toxins, mycotoxins from mold that over time trigger inflammation, damage the lining of the gut, triggering intestinal permeability or what's often called leaky gut syndrome. But what triggered that? What triggered the mycotoxins to be allowed to hang around in the body rather than be broken down and eliminated. So you can see, you know, as we go deeper and deeper, we go further upstream, what lies there? What's that? You know, so what do you hit when you can't go any further upstream? What do you hit when you can't dig any deeper, right? And I would suggest, I mean, test this out, stress test, Stress test this for yourself. But I would suggest that when you go far back enough in your history timeline, what is it that you butt up against? You know, what's that? What happened there? Um, so don't take my word for it. Test it out for yourself. Figure it out. Figure out if this is um, applicable to you. But what I've noticed in these 18 years of working with clients is that inevitably, when we go back along that timeline and really dig deep, inevitably we butt up against either unresolved trauma and or dishonoring one soul's calling. So in both cases, I see this as like a primary disconnection that's happened. Whether it's a disconnect from one's true self, from source, God, the universe, whatever term you prefer to use, from others, from one's community. But this the sense of primary, like a, a disconnection that ha happened at a very primary level. Now, trauma is a huge topic. We're going to uncover that or go through that through another series of videos. In this video, my intent is just to focus on the root cause, the zero point root cause of dishonoring one's soul's calling, okay? Which I think really is just another way of saying living inauthentically, living out of alignment with one true's, one's true self, okay? And so contemplating this got me thinking, how can I help support people to effectively address this particular zero point root cause? How can we tackle this root cause to have a positive impact on the rest of those determinants downstream to help with the nutrient deficiencies, the hormonal imbalances, the physical symptoms, et cetera? And that's what led me to develop, to formulate this theory, which I call the coherence theory of authenticity. Now, before we get into the theory itself, I just wanted to <clears throat> um, offer some shout outs, some thanks and gratitude to a few individuals that have inspired me, whose work I've, you know, um, been inspired by and, and really motivated me to create this video. First is Alan Watts. You take any of his works and you're going to find elements of what we're talking about here. Um, so I, I highly encourage you to check his work out. A gentleman named Nicholas Rusher, um, formulated what he called the coherence theory of truth. And that looked at truth as much more um, rationally, like kind of from a, a mental model. So um, you'll find that this theory differs quite a bit from that one, but it's more this, the, like the structure and the framework that I use as inspiration from uh, Mr. Rusher's work. And then a gentleman named Blake Lagrange, who um, is the founder uh, of a company called College, College with a K. And he kind of looked at this from a, a business perspective, but he recently put out a video on YouTube, which he entitled The Quest for Truth. And so I got a lot of inspiration from that. 
and then a gentleman named Jonathan who has the channel Gooby and Doobie on YouTube. And um, he shared a personal story uh, in inside of a, a recent video that he posted that I'm going to actually use, um, take a little bit from to illustrate what we're talking about here. So thank you so much to these four individuals. Um, yeah, much gratitude to them. So the coherence theory of authenticity. Um, I'll go through this diagram in just a moment. Um, but first of all, I just wanted to kind of set the context. So having contemplated why people don't succeed, why is it that people get stuck even though they know what it is that they need to be doing or should be doing? That led me, you know, that work with clients and kind of butting up against this again and again, led me to contemplate this more deeply and develop what I call the coherence theory of authenticity as an attempt, my attempt to address this issue in a very comprehensive way. So the theory of authenticity proposes that authenticity is founded in passion, matched by a healthy defiance, and grounded in objective truth, goodness, and beauty. And that's essentially what I'm trying to capture in this diagram. So we have our passion, what it is that we love, what fuels us, what fills us up with joy. And we match that with defiance or this um, sense of healthy rebellion against external pressure, societal norms, that which we despise or dislike. And all of that, all of that is grounded, shrouded, encompassed, embraced in higher truths of truth, goodness, and beauty, higher, uh, like objective truth. All right. So the theory posits that true success and fulfillment come from living in alignment with your deepest desires, values, and purpose. It's about making decisions based on what you genuinely love and in healthy defiance to what you despise and being in harmony with your authentic self. And when you do that, when you align with who you really are, your energy flows freely energy in your bioenergetic field, your body field, which will then positively impact your health and well-being. So when you're out of alignment, so when we're looking at the opposite of this happening, whether it's from trauma or ignoring one's soul's calling, the body's energy field, your biofield, which is the playground that I play, with, I play in with clients every day, gets disrupted. And it's that disruption that ultimately causes the physical health issues, the chronic illness, that you may be struggling with. So truth comes from aligning your actions and choices with your deeper purpose, what your soul is called to do, and the flow of the divine. So it's not just about what makes logical sense or even what may match your values, although that absolutely may be included with what we're talking about, but rather it's what feels right on a higher level living in truth. Okay, so I'm going to illustrate this more clearly with a real life story. Before we get to that story, I just want to very clearly define coherence, the word coherence, in case that term may be a little foggy to you, or maybe it's a new ter term for you. So coherence, um, we can look at it or define it in a couple of ways. One comes from quantum physics. Quantum physics says that the coherence is the synchronization of particles or waves leading to unified behaviors like superposition and entanglement. It's just saying harmony in the quantum field, okay? From a spiritual sense, coherence is the alignment of mind, body, and spirit with the universe, with God, with source. Again, whatever term you prefer. It's about finding balance and flow in life, harmonizing with this higher energy, harmonizing with essentially the world's energy. So really, these two definitions, seemingly different, but not really. They're flip sides of the same coin. They're saying the same thing, simply using different language. Both of them view coherence as both an act of creation and of surrender. So coherence is the result of conscious effort to align and at the same time involves surrendering to the natural flow of life to the universe okay so really coherence is simply alignment 
between our inner and outer energies or our inner and outer worlds, as well as our physical world and our consciousness. So our physical world and our spiritual world. Unity in motion, harmony in motion. All right, so hopefully a little clearer on the definition of coherence. And then we can kind of lead into this beautiful story. And the story comes from Jonathan. As I said, <clears throat> Jonathan is the host of the YouTube channel, uh, Gooby and Doobie. And uh, he put out a video a little while back about his decision to leave neurosurgery. And you might know him from that video. It blew up and went viral. Now, more recently, he put up a video around what he calls self betrayal. And he tells a story of when he was 18 years old. So I'm going to just paraphrase his story. If I'm getting any details incorrectly, um, that is not my intention. I apologize. Please let me know in the comments. Um, I'm just kind of pulling from his video, his sharing, because I think it beautifully illustrates what we're talking about here in terms of coherence. Okay. So uh, Jonathan shared a story of when he was 18 years old, and this took place in the summer after his initial year of university. So he had gone back home and he was debating what he should major in. So he kind of stood at this crossroads in uh, his life. He was presented with these two life paths. His soul's calling was drawing him towards philosophy. He loves poetry, Shakespeare, history, deep thinking. And that path resonated it seemed anyway, to me, it resonated very much with his heart and his spirit. I mean, when he talked about that, you could tell his face just lit up. It was obvious, right? However, he decided to choose a different path, one of science, which eventually led to neurosurgery. And that was largely due, as he describes, to external pressures from his family, although they were entirely well-meaning and well-intentioned, cultural expectations, and maybe most um, significantly, this promise of financial security. Like, how are you going to make a living by majoring in philosophy? That kind of thinking, right? So while this decision made logical sense from a practical perspective, it was not in alignment with his deeper self. So his decision was coherent in terms of societal values, you know, values of security, respect, financial security, stability, but it was out of coherence with his soul's truth. And as years passed, Jonathan felt a growing sense of regret. He felt a growing sense of disillusionment with the field he had chosen, neurosurgery, and as he describes in his own words, he describes it as self-betrayal. He felt like he had betrayed himself by not honoring those deeper desires. Now, the career that he chose was absolutely successful by any external standards, right? By society's standards. But it lacked the spiritual coherence that comes from living in alignment with one's true purpose. So I wanted to share that paraphrase his story because I feel it is a beautiful illustration of what we're talking about here, how making decisions based purely on logic or external pressures may lead to outward success, but can result in a lot of inner discord. So again, uh, much thanks and gratitude to Jonathan so, for so bravely, so vulnerably uh, sharing his story and his truth with the world. Okay, so at this point, I hope you have a little better sense of what it means to live authentically and why that is important. Why are we even talking about this? So I want to go now into breaking down the theory itself even further and specifically the key principles that um, the theory is founded upon. So principle number one, uh, what I call authenticity being rooted in passion. So true authenticity is not just about intellectual coherence, as was illustrated by Jonathan's story or external goals, but about being deeply connected to what ignites your passion, what you love, what you're passionate about, what fills you up. So you must be aware of what you truly love and what you despise. And we'll get to more of that in a second here. And allow for that, those feelings to guide you. 
So passion is the fuel for authenticity. It drives you towards the life that aligns with your inner truth. It acts like your guiding compass. When you pursue what you love, your actions become authentic expressions of who you are. Right? So that's principle number one. Authenticity is rooted in passion, what you love. Principle number two is flow. So a state of flow over goal setting. Traditional methods of goal setting and reverse engineering inherently limit the possibilities of an authentic life. When you live from your heart, following your passions and your desires, it's much more easy to enter into a state of flow. And this flow is what opens up limitless possibilities and pathways far beyond what you can plan for or what you can even imagine. Success then becomes an organic outcome of living in alignment with your deepest truths rather than forcing predete predetermined results into this rigid structure, okay? So authenticity is about allowing life to unfold naturally as you move in harmony with your core desires. Principle number three is having this sense of healthy rebellion. Healthy rebellion against external pressures or societal norms. <clears throat> Authenticity often requires a healthy sense of defiance against societal norms and external pressures. Living authentically means questioning the status quo, refusing to do things just because they seem necessary or because they are expected. Okay, out of the sense of um, expectation. So instead of conforming to external measures of su success, you choose to live according to what feels right and true for you. Again, think of the choice that Jonathan made to leave neurosurgery, right? That, that's what we're talking about. This healthy rebellion is key to breaking free from limiting beliefs and pressures that disconnect you from true self. So authenticity is not just about compromise, it's about living in a way that fully honors your own desires and values while being grounded in a higher objective truth, which leads us to principle number four, objective truth and universal alignment. So authentic authenticity is deeply personal and it also must be grounded in objective truth, beauty and goodness. Authenticity isn't just about doing what feels right for you. It's about ensuring that your actions are aligned with universal principles that transcend the self, transcend time. So continually asking yourself, is this love or desire pure? Is it built on truth or is it built on something shallow or superficial or false? Is this love or desire pure? Authenticity is sustainable only when it is rooted in truths that are timeless, noble, and aligned with a higher order. You must pursue a life that not only feels authentic to you, but that is also aligned with objective truth, goodness, beauty, and integrity. And when I think of this principle, I always think of what one of my naturopathic elders would say to us that the ultimate root cause of sickness is living out of alignment with nature's laws. And that's what we're talking about here. So living out of alignment with universal laws, nature's laws, objective, higher truth, however you want to call it. Principle number five is authenticity as an ongoing truth, ongoing quest for truth. Okay, so the quest for authenticity is a lifelong search for deeper truths. It involves constant self-reflection, continually asking yourself, why do I love this? What does it fulfill in me? And the more you question and reflect on your desires, what it is that you love, the closer you get to the root of who you truly are. So it's not static. Authenticity, much like health, is not a static state. It evolves. I think of it as a, a, a spiral upward, right? It evolves as you refine your understanding of what drives you and what connects you to the world in a meaningful way. And it's that constant questioning that ensures your actions remain in alignment with both your personal truth and the universal truths and laws that give life meaning. And finally, principle number six, 
defiance against what you despise. So as I said, there needs to be kind of this healthy sense of defiance because just as important as knowing what you love is knowing what you reject and despise. It's this defiance that fuels your authenticity by helping you stay clear of things that drain your energy, contradict your values, or pull you away from your true path. So you need both. You need to know both. Authentic living requires the courage to stand against manipulation, against superficiality, against actions that are untrue to your core. It's an act of defiance and I think also an act of courage and bravery. By bracing and accepting what it is that you despise, you solidify your commitment to what you love and stand for. You need both, right? So given these principles, what happens if I do all of this, right? What happens? What's the outcome of that? Well, the outcome, I suggest, is limitless potential. So when you combine passion, healthy rebellion, and alignment with objective truth, you create a life of limitless potential, a life in coherence with source, with the universe, with life itself. Success then flows naturally when you live from a place of deep authenticity without the constraints of rigid goals or external pressures. Your life becomes an authentic expression of your inner truths, an expression of source aligned with universal principles of goodness and beauty. And that is beauty itself. Limitless potential. So at this point, you may be wondering, well, how do I do all this on Candace? How do I realign with my true self and regain coherence? So what I want to offer you is a practical process to do just that. So I'd recommend starting by getting in touch with what it is that you truly love and also what it is that you despise. So maybe write this all down, even, you know, in two columns, what I love, what I despise, and get really, really clear about that. I gave you some examples, like from my own life, myself, right? I know what I love. I know that I love nature. I love family. I love heart-centered conversations, naturopathy, mysticism, alchemy, bioenergetics, like digging deeper, searching for those deeper truths, creating, teaching, storytelling, slow living, holism integration right I know I love all those things and I also know what I value I value love kindness simplicity connection being of service generosity beauty honesty inner peace etc etc and I know what I don't like I know what I despise you know fakeness or um, things that are synthetic a synthetic economy society's current approach to sickness or sick care right? Um, giving people pharmaceuticals, providing these band-aid solutions when it's not really what's in highest service to that person, to that individual, kind of negating the context of this individual's story and their life. I despise that. Uh, I don't like selling. I don't like small talk, manipulation, control tactics, pyramid schemes, you know, big city living uh, with more noise, faster pace, artificial lights, etc. So I know a lot of what I love and I know a lot of what I don't love, what I despise. So I'll ask you, like, what is it that you love? What do you desire? And then on the flip side of that, what do you dislike or despise? Get really clear about that. Write it out. Okay. And then from there, then from there, you can ask yourself, Am I living in alignment with that which I love and desire? Or am I living according to someone else's, perhaps society's, expectations? Okay. Now to figure that out, tap into tools like meditation, journaling, stillness, quiet reflection to help you uncover what matters most to you. And I'd highly recommend doing this out in nature, being in nature while you're contemplating these things. So question yourself daily after you've done that as well, right? It's that ongoing questioning. What do I love? Why do I love this? What does it fulfill in me? What feels authentic to me? What does living authentically look like for me? Because then you're going to know, right? If you're not living in alignment with your authentic self, There's value in having that awareness because then from there you could say, okay, what changes might I need to make in order to regain coherence in my life and in my health? 
And I would say above all, listen to your intuition. It's never wrong. It's going to guide you. Be open to receiving the downloads that come through your intuition. The answers are there. The answers are already within you. You have them. Now, if you feel like you need a little bit more help, I have created what I call this um, authenticity questioning tool. It's an algorithm. And I would say it, it may be especially helpful for those that are uh, tend to come with things a little bit more rationally or maybe from kind of the left brain side of things. So you can uh, use this questioning tool, which is based on the coherence theory of authenticity. And it guides you through what I think are four key layers of reflection in order to ensure your actions, your decisions, and desires do align with both your authentic self and universal truths, objective truths, okay? So the first layer of questioning is through this filter of love, and that's going to ensure alignment with your core desires. What it is that I love, what am I passionate about? The second layer of filtering is through flow, and that's going to check if the decision feels natural or forced. Does it feel light or does it feel heavy? Okay. The third layer of filtering is through this healthy defiance or rebellion, which is going to help you avoid being influenced by external pressures, societal norms, status quo that may not be in alignment with your higher truth. And the fourth and final layer is through universal law. These objective, um, uh, high, higher states of truth, beauty, and goodness, which is going to verify alignment with universal truths. Okay, so the algorithm itself, I think, is pretty straightforward. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that in the video. Basically, you go uh, to step one, which is that filter of love to ensure that it's in alignment with your core desire. And the input, which you're gonna put into the algorithm, is the action or decision that you're considering. Okay, and then you simply ask yourself, does this action, does this decision align with what I deeply love? If the answer is yes, proceed to step two. If the answer is no, then reconsider, pause, and look at how it may be out of alignment with your core desires. What, what it is that you love, okay? And likewise, you just go step by step through that algorithm. So I'll um, provide a link to these notes so you can download it, print it off, and use this algorithm yourself if, you, if you'd like to do that. All right, so the final output, the goal of utilizing that algorithm is, you know, to come to a decision and to be in that sense of decisiveness about what it is that you desire and the actions that you're taking. So after passing through those four layers of questioning, you can make a decision that is in alignment with your authentic self, grounded in love, flowing naturally, rebelling against external pressures, and built on solid universal truths. All right, so to kind of sum everything up here, authenticity, I propose, is optimal health. Authenticity is optimal health. Authenticity is living in alignment with what you truly love and what your soul is called to do. When this alignment exists, it promotes coherence. And coherence is key for a state of health, for homeostasis. A coherent state in the body's energy field facilitates health and well-being and the capacity to heal. Conversely, on the flip side, when you're out of alignment, i.e. not living authentically, not listening to your soul's calling, you lose that coherence and the resulting energetic imbalance is what leads to sickness. It may lead to nutrient uh, deficiencies, hormonal imbalances, you know, your body being susceptible to picking up pathogens, etc. But it's those zero point root causes that come first. And I would say a big one, if not the biggest one, is living um, out of alignment or dishonoring your soul's calling. So addressing the zero point root cause restores coherence, which then allows the body to heal and function optimally. Authenticity is optimal health, which is the basis for the coherence theory of authenticity. 
Now a little bit of home play. I always like to leave uh, my clients with what I call home play rather than homework. You want to play with it. You want to have a lightness to this. So I would highly encourage you to answer the questions, the reflective questions that we went through earlier. And then I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments. You know, when you, when you did this contemplation, what came out of that? Are you living in alignment with your authentic self? And maybe more importantly, what's one step you can take right now in this moment to live more authentically? Okay, I'd love to hear from you. And then lastly, I have an invitation for you. So I'm trying something new and I'd love to invite you to what I'm calling our connection calls. So think of this as a deeper conversation where we can um, connect together in a group, but in a live format and to allow you to experience what I call the magic for yourself. So I'm going to link to how to access, how to join the connection calls in the description. I encourage you to check that out. These connection calls are free to attend. Nothing is required aside from your presence. And I would say an open mind, be open to the process. Um, you're always welcome to take what resonates for you and leave the rest. What is true for me? And there's no obligations. I'm not pitching anything on these calls. At the end, it'll be uh, a sentence, a simple sentence. If you would like to work uh, with me or have a sense, if that's going to be something that's in benefit to you, in service to you, I'll let you know how to contact me. But it's not a sales pitch. There's no obligations. It's just to come to experience the magic and hopefully get you some quick wins to celebrate those quick wins with you. So just in full transparency, uh, this is a little meta because it's also my attempt at embodying what we just talked about in this video, uh, embodying coherence and authenticity. So what I mean by that is I value showing over telling. I value genuineness, integrity, connection, and intimacy. And I don't like, I despise manipulation and control toxic tactics so when I was looking at my marketing and what I've been up to in terms of you know um, growing my business I needed to be honest with myself and the fact is that those uh, strategies and tactics are not in alignment with my true self and that's why I didn't feel good and that's why I was butting up against like the stuckness uh, being told by the marketing gurus uh, you need to do this but then uh, I know what I need to do I'm just not doing it why is that so this is very meta. <laughs> I've, I've paused listening to the marketing experts and I've decided to listen to my heart because I realized that, like I said, what I was doing in terms of marketing was not in alignment with my true self. So the connection call, I think, is a, a better expression, a more close expression um, to that. So I'm testing it out. I'd love for you to join me. And uh, let's just have fun with it. So check out the connection calls, link in the description be below. I hope you found this uh, video beneficial. Like I said, let me know how things go. Are you living in alignment with your authentic self? What's one step you can take in this moment right now to live more authentically? Uh, gratitude to you. Thanks for spending this time with me. Take care.